Hey everyone, I'm Sarah Fish. And I'm Brandon Price. And this is Fish or Price Ranch. Ranch. Hey everyone, I'm Sarah. Welcome back to Fisher Price Ranch. First off, please don't forget to subscribe and like this video. So today I thought I'd go over um, a little bit about registration and animals. Um, a lot of, some people have uh, a little hard time understanding how registration works on livestock. And so I thought I'd go over a little bit about um, how it works with my goats. So the, the Kiko goats are a performance tested breed. And so they need to perform well to be registered. If they're not performing well, they usually get cold. Cold means that they are removed from the herd. Removing from the herd could mean, yes, that they do get butchered and, you know, for slaughter and meat. Um, or it can mean that they're sold as pets. They could also be sold as commercial stock, which means not papered um, to just other breeders that typically use their goats just for meat or pets or whatever. Um, so those are a couple of ways of culling your goats. Um, I've also sold them as pack goats. They're still great for that, just not exactly top quality enough to be registered as breeding stock. So you only really want to register your best stock. You don't want to register everything. When you register everything, that's how a breed gets ruined. Um, so you definitely want to be really picky on who gets registered. And one way to do that is you're going to have to let them grow. Um, so we typically, if we're keeping the goats, they do not get registered until they have proven um, that they're of quality. So for instance, I have a doe right now. She's two years old. She has had one set of kids and she had no issues giving birth. She got the baby up, cleaned it, nursed it, took care of it for about three days, and then suddenly rejected it. I don't know why she did that. We did have a little bit of issue with that this year. I'm wondering if it was um, our new housing and it had a funny smell in there. So it made the goats, you know, turn off by the smell if it got on their babies. Um, most of our girls did take their kids back after a few days. But we did have to bottle feed quite a few. So even though she has never been dewormed, her feet are great. She's very hardy, grass-fed, and she's really large. She's grown well. She was a triplet when she was born. Um, she's had a set of kids, went full term, got a nice udder, one by one teats. Everything is there for a good quality goat. But she rejected her kids. So she has a strike against her now. Um, so even though some of the other ones that have recently had their first kids and they've done well, their kids are growing great, I have decided to register them, but I have not decided to register this doe in particular. I will give her another chance. Um, we'll be breeding her again this fall. She'll have kids again around December. And if she does really well with that and her kid grows very well, then she'll be registered. But for now, she's two years old and still not registered. So the same goes for my boys. Anything that I've kept as a breeding male, uh, we wait till they have kids on the ground. They have to prove that they're actually producing very well. Um, any butt can produce kids. You know, simple as that. But you want quality kids. So, um, for instance, I just sold a baby recently that was freshly weaned, and I had not registered the sire yet. And so... Um, you know, when I re when I sell the kids as register a bowl, uh, they're not registered yet. I won't register anything until either they're sold or if I'm keeping them, they have to produce. So some of them don't get registered till they're two plus years old. And then others you have to register. Um, I usually sell the kids with their registration paperwork and then the owners can get them registered when they're ready. Some people will wait on getting them registered until they've proven on the farm. Um, and then others will register right away. So anyway, this particular kid was not registered yet because it was freshly weaned off the mom. And the sire was not registered yet because he was a first time, um, he was, had just given me those first set of kids. Well, I've recently got more kids off of him and I feel very comfortable with what he's producing and so have decided to register him. I wouldn't have sold the kid as registered if I didn't feel comfortable with that. So I sent in his paperwork, which takes a while, especially if you're DNA testing, which I think is very important. You don't want to go through an issue like I did where I got a registered doe 
and she came with her papers already registered, not DNA tested. Well, I wanted a DNA tester, that way I could DNA test the kids, and the papers were not hers. Neither parent matched. It took six months, but we did finally track down the parents, and she is still fully registered, thank goodness. Um, so I think it's very important for DNA testing because some people are out there just to make money and they'll make up paperwork and then others are out there to do the right thing. So with that being said, um, I sent in the Cyrus paperwork and DNA testing takes weeks. It can take four to six weeks. And so it's going to take a while and sometimes longer depending on how backed up the lab is. So anyway, um, it wasn't quick enough. Uh, so we had a little issue there, but it's resolved now because I did finally get the registration for the sire and was able to give it to the new buyers of the kid and now they can get him registered. So anyway, some people just need to understand the registration process can take time and not everything needs to be registered because that is how you ruin a breed and then you just end up with the same old stuff, you know, that everybody gets and then it becomes not worth it. So, <clears throat> I hope this was helpful. Uh, if you guys have any questions, definitely put them in the comments down below and I will answer them accordingly. Um, thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you again soon.